Vuxstorm there with Who's My Eugene. Uh, on Out on the Patio, we also heard Tipo in there as well with See the World, Ballpark Music, A Good Life is the Best Revenge was the track we heard from them and uh, Parcels tied up right now and the beginning of that bracket we heard from Polarize and Take a Step Back and thanks to Rudy from Polarize for joining me down the line. They're going to be launching their Lucky Eye EP on Friday, April 9th at the curtain on triple r you are tuned into out on the patio june jones has been one of the most intriguing performers on the melbourne music landscape since she emerged as the lead singer of emotion punk trio two steps on the water her debut record diana came out in 2019 and in february of this year she released her second record leaf cutter a work she self-produced over the course of 2020 exploring her personal identity as a self-described deeply emotional trans woman a lesbian with adhd welcome to triple r june jones thank you very much kate thanks for having me it's such a pleasure to have you here. Uh, we are going to be hearing soon some uh, tunes from your second record, Leaf Cutter, a record that you created across lockdown last year. What was it like for you making this record during that time? Um, I think, if anything, lockdown just gave me an excuse to um, do a lot of work and not go out, which I honestly don't hate doing sometimes. It was kind of nice to not have any obligations. I know that there are a lot of bad things that came with it, but um, I really love being at home. <laughs> <laughs> I read somewhere that you describing that the song Jenny as being a song about surviving inner trauma and outer dystopia, which kind of also seems somehow to describe many people's experience of lockdown. Maybe that's partly why this uh, record has resonated so well with people. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, there are a lot of people who, experience the world in that way all the time and then there are some people who maybe aren't used to feeling like that in the world but were sort of forced to reckon with what that would be like um, if only for a limited time. You were listening to a lot of Björk's medulla you've said at the time. What else was inspiring Leaf Cutter? Um, I feel like I was sort of paying homage to some of my um, favourite electronic artists. Yeah, like Björk, um, artists like the Knife and FKA Twigs and Anoni, um, as well as artists like Tammy T and Sophie. But I always feel funny talking about other artists in reference to my own because I just never, I never feel like, you know, what I'm doing compares to that. Well, I mean, for you as well, doing interviews, you give so much of yourself in your music, it must be like. Here we go again, being asked more questions. I wanted to ask you about um, about the nature of the record because we do learn a lot about how your brain and your personality work from listening to this record. You know, your cravings for love, a baby, home, your dreams, your shopping mall, food court brain, um, and you were recently diagnosed as ADHD. Tell, me, tell us a little bit about the journey to that diagnosis and what the impact's been on you. Yeah, yeah. Um... I kind of sought out the diagnosis um, a few years ago, just after, you know, a long period of being like, why do I struggle with certain things in a way that, you know, a lot of people I know don't. Um, and, you know, one of the things was like, I find it really hard to sit down and read a book, even though I love reading and I love stories. And I, it's like all I want to do. And it's just really confronting when you can't actually do the thing you want to do. And so I just kind of started doing some research and talking to people and um, and thought, oh, this kind of sounds like maybe that's what's happening. Um, yeah, so that was like three or four years ago. Um, and I think in terms of getting a diagnosis, it's just been really helpful to, you know, have perspective on um, how I move through the world and um, things that are, are difficult and occasionally sometimes things that are easier, you know, I think... I don't think I'd be a musician if I didn't have ADHD. I'm just always kind of drawn to, to working and, and creating and doing what's fun to me, which luckily is music. It, when I listen to this record, it kind of feels like we're actually inside your head. Um, so I wonder what is songwriting for you? Is it a, a kind of like an impossible urge or uh, more of a catharsis or a desire to be understood? Yeah, I think it's... I think it's all of those things. I think it's, you know, somewhere between catharsis and um, egoizing. 
you know, and a, a, yeah, desire to be seen and to be understood, but also the desire to um, give a voice to other people who, who share those experiences. There's also a very cohesive atmosphere to this record. Is that a deliberate creative decision for you or is it just how the music flows out of you? I think um, after making the first record, I felt a little bit self-conscious um, because my sense was that it was a record um, that was kind of like two records uh, woven into one and it had some songs that were really um, piano-based and and ballady, and then other ones which were sort of exploring different um, ideas of electronic music. And I think what I wanted to do with this record was to make something that was overall cohesive, um, but that each song had individual elements and you couldn't really mistake one song for another. Is it a different um, experience of musical expression? I mean, this is your second record now, but as a solo artist compared for compared with how you are making music as part of your band, Two Steps on the Water, um, how do those two different ways of making music compare? I mean, I think that um, it was a, a, a real shift in my experience um, of the world that necessitated a change from the band to the solo project. I, I started writing the songs on Diana initially with the hope of um, incorporating them into the into the band, and we we tried working on a few of them, but they were just a really different. They had a really different mood, and I was writing them on piano as opposed to guitar, um, and those songs were a lot slower. Um, and you know, I look back and I'm like, yeah, actually, that makes a lot of sense. My experience of the world really did shift um, to this place where I, I did start making different music. June, if you could move a little bit closer to the mic so we can get a little bit more. Yeah. Hearing, you know what it is? I keep hearing my mouth sounds. My, ah, very my off-putting. Mouth and, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to avoid that. But, yeah, I'll, I'll speak a bit louder. <laughs> Thank you. This is the first time you self-produced, and I wonder if that's connected to the intensely personal nature of the record, or was that um, another? Was there another reason for that decision? I mean, I think the the impulse comes from um, a desire for total control. Um, you know, I'm I'm a bit of a control freak, but also I just had these these things that I wanted to do, um, certain sounds I wanted to work with, and ironically, you know, I thought I would be like unhindered by um, external opinions, but then you realize that you're actually very hindered by um, <laughs> limited abilities. So, cause I was really learning to produce while making this record. Um, so I think, you know, I kind of love that it, it turned out to be this thing, as I think so many works of art are, that exists between what you want to do and what you can do. Did the songs metamorphize very much over the course of the production of them? Um, I'm not, yes, so some of them did. There are definitely a few songs on the record that I rewrote multiple times with completely different lyrics and themes um, and others that I kept the lyrics, I kept the vocals and I totally changed the um, the backing track and the instrumental side. For instance, Holy Water, um, track five on the album, was originally all sort of um, different synth sounds and then for some reason I can't quite remember, I decided, oh, what would it sound like if I changed them all to different string parts? Um, and, you know, it's just always a, a process of feeling it out. And um, as soon as I make something, I think it's the best thing I've ever made, but then I have to give it a couple of weeks of, of listening to it over and over again and reflecting until I realise that, you know, usually something pretty big needs to change. <laughs> There's that classic kind of notion that the second record is the difficult one. Did you have any of those issues? I mean, that's a good question. It's funny, I, I sort of don't think of it as my second record. Mm. Like, obviously, it is the second record of my solo career, but I really do see a through line um, from the records with Two Steps on the Water in terms of the fact that uh, lyrically and in terms of storytelling, there's a real... Um, consistency of, of speaking to a personal experience and I sort of just see them as, as different approaches to that project um, and I think you know the things that were difficult about about making Leaf Cutter had a lot to do with my decision to to do all of the production and engineering and mixing myself. Uh, we're coming up to 10 past five so we should let you go um, and uh, 
perform your tunes. But I'd, lastly, I just wanted to ask you that you you concocted the track therapy while walking through Kmart and then wrote it down in a notebook that you bought then. What are your feelings about the death of Kmart at the Northcote Plaza? You're a local girl. Um, I didn't know that Northcote Plaza's Kmart was closing. I yes, was, it's closed. I it. It's closed already. Yes. Oh my God, when did it happen? <laughs> I think during lockdown, I don't think it survived financially, the whole lockdown thing. Yes. I did not know that a corporation like Kmart was so susceptible to the whims of, um, you know, economic change amongst the pandemic. It could have been a move uh, to online buying, I'm not sure. Mm, Yeah, I mean, I definitely don't endorse uh, Kmart on an ethical level. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and I'm sorry to drop that bomb on you just as you're about to I know, I'll be crying through my whole set Emotion. yeah <laughs> June Jones, thank you so much for the chat um, you are performing from your garage in Coburg Yes, well, not my garage anymore because we spent a couple of hours trying to get it all set up and um, I realised that having the internet come from the modem to the extender through a um, Ethernet cable, like we just weren't getting the signal that we wanted. So I'm actually now in the opposite of the garage, which is the front room. Um, so I can see the street, I can see my neighbour Brian taking out the bins. And we can see a beautiful painting behind you. Yes, the painting I found on the, on the street. Um, wow. Uh, maybe a couple of years ago. <laughs> Who needs Kmart? I know. We can buy um, trashy art with no money from <laughs> hard rubbish. Yeah, fantastic. All right, June, thank you so much for the chat. We'd better let you take it away. This is June Jones on Triple R, out on the patio with holy water. Thanks, June. Thanks so much, Kate. I'm just going to start by acknowledging that I am um, broadcasting from stolen land that belongs to the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nations. I'd like to pay my respects to elders past and present and any First Nations people out there listening. Sovereignty has never been ceded. This track is holy water. Can I do than this? 
can I do than this? I hold my body like a fist. What more can I do than this? What more can I do than this? What more can I do than this? Cold ceramic against my Thank you very much. Um, I just realized I changed the order of my set. I forgot to forgot to tell you. That's all good, June. Thank you. That was beautiful. Do you want me to go into my next song? Yeah, go into your next song. Right. Yeah. Well, if you've got a story to tell, I can story. tell a story. <laughs> we can talk about Kmart again. We're listening to June Jones here, live, performing live on uh, out on the patio on Triple R. That was Holy Water. What's up next, June? Uh, this next song is called Home. I'm not going to tell a story. Some people might say that music is stories. I wouldn't. This is just a song. <laughs> Don't read into it.
June Jones with Home. Lovely stuff. Thanks, June. Thanks, Kate. Thanks some, for having me. Oh, some no. deep vibes on that. Some oh. something resonating through my chair. It sounded amazing. The piano. Mm. The piano part I chucked in at the last minute. <laughs> I love that bit that you chucked in at the last minute. Thank you for oh, adding that. So many things. Mm. <laughs> you like these glasses I just got? Put them on. I love them. They're, they're flames. Oh, I am so glad. This is radio is finally a visual medium. <laughs> we all get to enjoy your flame glasses. We all just wanted television all along. <laughs> you were born to do it. I love radio, and that's why I'm here. Mm. Um, I'm going to play another song. What's the next one going to be? This one's called Remember. I did, a, I did an Instagram poll to figure out the last song on my set list for this um, performance and I gave them the choice between this one and Jenny, which is the opener. And I did a terrible, a terrible thing because most people actually said Jenny, but um, I vetoed it. Oh, ma. I know. Uh, it's the end of democracy as we know it. Yeah. June Jones fans revolt. Revolt. I know. Finally. <laughs> take, take me down. <laughs> Um, yeah, so this Sound like the Australian government. Ask the people and then just do whatever they want anyway. I'm just like the Australian <laughs> government. What a, what, a great, um, what a great moment in time to be called just like the Australian government. Anyway. June Jones, live on Out on the Patio. Yes. The next track is? Remember. Remember. Hope you enjoy. <laughs>
had to pay homage to my favorite song. Thousand Miles, baby. That was beautiful, June. That was Remember. Do you have a bad memory? I have a terrible, I have a shocking memory. I thought you were asking, like, do I, do I have a, is there a bad thing that happened? Oh, <laughs> no, no, no. I meant, is your memory not very efficient? It's so bad, as evidenced by the fact that I forgot to tell you that I changed my um, <laughs> set list. I'm always trying to log things in my brain, but then one new thing bumps out the other one. There's too much in there. I've got a question my producer wanted to ask uh, behind you next to the uh, painting. Is that a little knife a stuck up knife. on your wall? A fake knife? Yeah, it's from the video for um, Home. Why? Wh what's it doing there on the wall? It's menacing. Oh, is it? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> it's it's countered by the beautifulness, be beauty of the of the flowers. The reference is, is leaf cutter. <gasps> leaf cutter, of course. Now it all makes sense. <laughs> I've actually got earrings that are a sword in the leaf, but you can't really see it. Do you want me to take it down? No, I like it. Now that you've told me what it means and it makes sense, we're in trouble. I get it. I was a bit intimidated before. But um, now I feel comfortable. Well, Thank I you. It with nail polish, so I thought it looked. I think it's quite pretty. Mm. Yeah, it's a it's a, um, a toy knife that I got for the video clip for Home. Um, if you watch it, you'll you'll see it. Anyway, I've moved it now. Oh, thank you. Sorry if anyone felt menaced. <laughs> I think it was just me. Um, we've got one more track uh, from you, June. It's been so beautiful so far. Thank you very much. No worries. What's um, the last track you have for this us? This last track is called Therapy. And this is the one you wrote in Kmart. Well, yeah, I wrote it um, on a chair outside of Kmart. You I never know when. I a, you know, a revelatory experience. And I was like, that needs to be immortalized in, in song. Thank God they sell notepads. Thank God they sell notepads because... That's so often what I do is I go in there and I spend $2 and I just feel like, oh, I feel better now. <laughs> it is therapy. And even saying I feel better now, I swear to God that's from an ad. And obviously it's a real <laughs> string of words that you can say, but just the way that like um, consumerism pervades every moment of our lives. Mm. Very um, apt, apt introduction to this song. Thanks, June. June Jones, live on Out on the Patio. What a treat. This is therapy. Thanks, June.
epic vibes there. Therapy from June Jones. That was fantastic, June. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me, Kate. I apologise to anyone who realised that my reverb was sort of going on and off and off and on all throughout this set. I am not good at remembering anything. (laughs) As you said, we forgive you. It was beautiful. Thank you. My pleasure. Thanks so much for having me. You've been listening to June Jones live on Triple R and thank you to our live stream sponsors, Young Henry's. And thanks to everyone who's been listening or been watching June's performance via the Triple R website and social media pages. If you missed her beautiful performance just now, you can listen back on demand or watch it uh, via Triple R's website, Facebook and YouTube. And uh, we heard the tracks Therapy, Remember, Home and Holy Water from June Jones. She's also releasing a song and a newsletter a month at the moment on Patreon, so you can sign up to her Patreon. And uh, if you would like to catch her live, um, a performance is coming up April the 23rd at the beautiful Thornbury Theatre, which I think will suit your music very much, June. Um, <laughs> it's a, uh, an album launch for Leaf Cutter, is that right? And A third one? Third one. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Why not do three? Well, you know, the first two sold out, so the people want it. You're just giving the people what they want. I just got laid off from my job, so, you know, I'm just trying to pay rent. (laughs) Come on, people, pay June Jones's rent. She's going to be performing with Katie Day and Ali Shimada at the Thornbury Theatre on April 23rd. June, thank you so much. We're going to hear now from uh, your old band, Two Steps on the Water. It's a blast from the past. Thought we'd listen to it. Triple R is where you're at, Alma Patio. My name is Kate. This has been June. Thank you so much.